Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. It's a Mrs. Pasture's cookie. <laughs> hey, this week on Animal Zone, we've got a great episode, Watson. We're gonna be seeing the amazing Laura Stinchfield Pet Psychic as she talks with Mikey, the pit bull, finding out all about what's on his mind beyond treats. Then later on, we're gonna be going over and finding out more about cats at the Santa Barbara Humane Society. Up at Canine Solutions, they're gonna show us how they can teach a dog to behave. And finally, we're gonna be talking with Wayne Pacelli. He's the animal activist and author of The Bond. We're gonna find out all about the latest in animal welfare. Isn't that gonna be a great show, Watson? Say, ah, Animal Zone. Bonjour, Alex. Bonjour, Renaud. Happiness, it's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries, especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renault's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada, Flint Ridge. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we provide low-cost spay and neuter services and vaccinations. It's important for your dogs and cats to get vaccinated to prevent illnesses. And spay and neuter surgeries help prevent unwanted pregnancies and can benefit the health of your pet. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not chop. Well, here we are on Animal Zone with Mikey and our pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield. <laughs> and in a way, the timing is perfect because you just had a book that's come out. That's true, yes. Tell us about yeah. the You have two books, So I have right? two books that came out. Um, one is called Voices of the Animals, and it's about, uh, there's lots of different stories and articles in there about how to talk to the animals and animals that I've encountered in my life. And then the other book is called Stormy's Words of Wisdom. And Stormy was quite famous in his day when he was alive. He was on my radio show and he had a segment called Stormy's Words of Wisdom. And he used to get fan mail and yeah, and cards and people used to stop every time they saw him. So these are all things that he has said in the last five years of his life. So little quotes that he said. It's so fascinating. I think a lot of our viewers may not understand exactly what a pet psychic is. Can mm -hmm. you kind of just give us an overview of how that started in your life? Mm -hmm. What a pet psychic does is they talk to animals or we talk to animals and we can pick up their thoughts and their feelings and their images in their mind. And then we, um, we can ask them questions or tell them anything that their people want and we can also hear them back. <laughs> Mikey, Mikey, come over here and just sit here for a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, sit, let's sit, sit, good sit and wait. Wait, good boy. So when you sometimes tap into dogs or other animals, mm -hmm. um, do they ever tell you things that are disturbing that you don't want to tell the client? That I don't want to tell the... Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. Really? Yeah, they say things all the time and I'm like, oh my God, no, please no. Uh -huh. but, um, but I have to because I'm their voice. Mm -hmm. So like for instance, this one, oh gosh, this, is a, this one woman in, had me to her barn to talk to her horse and when I was leaving her dog came running over to me and wanted to talk to me and I was like, your dog really wants to talk to me, can I listen? And, and she's like, oh yeah, you know, of course, you know, sure. And the dog was like, I don't like the woman that is coming over with dad. Ooh. Like I don't like the woman dad's having over. 
Ooh. You mean like revealing that there was an affair there going on? There was an affair. The dog ratted. <laughs> and there's a divorce. As a result of that? Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty So amazing. they'll say things that are a little bit like, oh my gosh, you know, that are just, or they'll say personal things like about somebody, how they're doing in their heart. They, uh, they often talk about like, oh, I'm worried about my mom. She's really sad or she's having a hard time. But those are, they're really beautiful because the animals just concerned, mm -hmm. you know? And so I don't mind saying those as much. Dogs have an amazing sense of smell. We know mm -hmm. that, I mean, much better mm -hmm. than our sense of smell. Uh, but is it true that dogs have saved people in in situations like there's a fire in a house oh, and they come yes. waking up the, yeah. the owners? Have you, have you ever had any personal contact oh, with someone like yeah. that? You know, I have. I've talked to some animals that have, have woken their people up in fires. Mm. Yeah, dogs and cats that have woken their people up in fires. So they knew there was danger and they knew yes. they had to get the owner yeah. up and going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the lassie yeah. coming and, coming for Timmy is really true. And huh? horses who have refused to go down trails and then they find out that there have been mountain lions down there, you know. Yeah. And I understand that uh, dogs uh, are have an amazing sense of being able to know when someone's sick or there's an yes. illness. How do yeah. they do that? How do they pick up? So I had this one doxy once who was, she was escaping from the house. She was a miniature dachshund and she, she was a my dog. She was a client's dog. She was escaping from the house and they couldn't figure out why. And she started to do really strange things. Like she'd get into the garage and then she'd go through the, like she'd rip the dryer vent and then go through the dryer vent to the outside of the house. and. And when they had me over to talk to her, she said, um, I'm trying to find my mom. And uh, my mom's, um, like her her area here, it, there's so, it's something smells wrong. I'm really concerned with her. Something's wrong with her there. And she was a cancer survivor. She had ovarian can cancer and, and um, beat it. And she, because of that doxy, she went to the doctor and it got, um, Wow. Yeah. So she, it, she it, actually had a, previ uh, she early, had a previous early, thing, early, uh, right? And she diagnosis. was she was clear. And because uh -huh. that dachshund was escaping from the house and said, "I smell something there," she went back and they caught it early enough. Well, does Mikey have anything he wants to Where say? What do you think, Mikey? <laughs> he says he wants a cat hat, and you should train one of them to sit on his head. <laughs> well, Mikey, you had a lot to say there, didn't you? <laughs> and he's saying, "Give me some more treats, <laughs> Mikey. Hat. One more treat. One more treat." One more treat? Yeah, that okay. That's so funny. No. He before would be you get the treat, cat going before you get head, wouldn't he? Treat. He wouldn't allow that. Mikey, where can you get <laughs> Laura's books? Do you know? Oh. Oh. Look, here they are. Here they are. You can get them on you, Amazon, right? On Amazon, and you can order them from your local bookstore. And you have a website as well. Right? I do have a website. It's thepetpsychic.com. And people can get in touch with you, maybe they set can. up a, a reading. Uh huh. You can do it remotely too. Remotely, right? all over the world. Well, that's pretty great. Yeah, my clients are all over the world. We'll be right back. Hello everyone, I'm Peter Noon and this is Lola and this is Lucy and we're all here watching Animal Zone, it's our favourite. Sometimes our tongues come out while we're watching it like this. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today and don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Unfortunately, disasters can strike at any time, and it's very important that you and your pets are prepared to leave at a moment's notice. And Sam's gonna guide us through a couple of resources and things we can put together during that time. So a few things that are a necessity, leash and collar, collar should always be on your dog, we recommend a personalized name tag and a microchip and to just make sure your microchip information is registered to your current address and phone number. It's good to have that all in a folder so you can have all your medical notations, easy, right, available. Crate, place for your pet to sleep. Bowls, food and water, three day supplies recommended. For cats, obviously you need your litter box and then high valuable toys, toys that they tend to gravitate towards so that they have that comfort in the high stress time. Good way to store this all for the dog is just put all the supplies in the crate. Get your leash and collar on your dog, carry your crate, you're good to go. For the cat, have a little bag set aside with all your supplies in that so the crate is available for the cat to go in. Bag, crate, and you're good to go. Santa Barbara Humane Society also offers a vaccination clinic, so if you need your pets updated on their vaccinations, you can get that from us. Put that in your folder when you're ready to head out. We also offer emergency boarding during times of disaster, and you can check out FEMA.gov for a full list of the items that you need to put together in your kit.
so we're here today with uh, Janelle and JJ. Yeah, this is JJ. And JJ's, how long has JJ been at the Santa Barbara Humane Society? Oh gosh, not very long. He's one of our new kids here. He's probably been with us about a week, maybe a week and a half. He's a sweet boy. He is very, very sweet. He is very active. He loves to play and chase and find. <laughs> uh, and he's so, so handsome. Yes. So now you're the cat expert here. How, how many, how many, how many cats do you have at the Humane Society? Um, it's kind of varied. Um, we usually average anywhere between 10 cats at a time to 30-ish, depending on how many we get in. And you know, if there's a lot of cats during summertime, we usually pick up a lot more, mm -hmm. um, which is great. And then we'll we'll bring them in from other shelters too. And uh, when we're a little low, because we've got the space, we want to help as many as we can. One of the things I've noticed with cats is that uh, they can be incredibly affectionate, they're incredibly playful, <laughs> and uh, and sometimes they're very solitary and they want to be by themselves. Yeah. So uh, th these emotion, emotional swings, is that, is that to do with hormones or is it to do with climate uh, or? It, it can be a little bit of everything. Now, we we try and regulate, we have a synthetic hormone that we use here. It's called, you know, feel away and they, we put that into their kennels, into the air here, just to kind of help relax them. Um, so it is a hormonal thing too, um, and a lot of it is environmental. If there's a lot going on, they're not gonna wanna come out and play so much. They are very, they're, they're more independent creatures, and with dogs, they're very social creatures. So cats, they just, they wanna make sure that they're gonna be able to control the situation. Are, are there certain types of cats that have certain types of personalities versus other types? With with what I've found, it's really just on an independent, like an individual level. Um, a lot of them will show, you know, similar symptoms or, or emotions, or you know, but it's mostly just kind of, you know, you can have two brown tabbies that are both short-haired kitties and they are vastly different from each other. So it's not so much a specific breed or type that I have found that has these personalities. Um, it's just, you know, on an individual level. Is, is there anything that we should do to make a cat happier at in a home? There's, yeah, there's lots of things that we can do. Um, it, it's really, Watching their body language is going to be the biggest thing. Um, they'll kind of tell you. You just you got to learn their language, but they're they're very open with what they want and what they need. They have a lot of different tells and signs, things that they like, things they don't like. When they're a little uncertain, when they're really comfortable. So it's really just learning your cat and, and making sure that that they're comfortable, and when they are, when they're giving you these happy signs, you know that, hey, let's do some more of this, let's make this place as comfortable as possible for them, and then you're gonna start seeing a lot more social come out of your cat, more social aspects of them, and, and they'll, they'll start going from what you thought was a very shy and reserved cat to, oh, they, they wanna come and sit with me more, they wanna, they wanna play with me more, they wanna chase the wand now because they're a lot more comfortable. Do they have, like elephants are supposed to have really good memories? <laughs> do they have really good memories? I think they do. I, I've seen a lot of our cats that they'll, they'll you know, be acting a specific way and then something will happen or like with treats, we use treats a lot when we come into their kennel, we'll, you know, give them treats, especially for the really shy reserved ones that, you know, are, are still unsure about us as, as the, you know, kennel staff or, you know, any of the staff members here, it's, we'll, we'll like present them with something and they'll remember that and it'll start being like, oh, if I come out and say hi to her, I'm gonna get a treat, you know? So it's really, it's kind of like a conditioning thing, but they condition us just as much, so. <laughs> Well, it sounds like uh, this is a great place to adopt a, a kitty when you're ready to adopt. Absolutely. We we get a variety of amazing cats in here. They're so much fun and we always we always try and and pull, you know, from from local first and then any um, pop, you know, overpopulated shelters that need our help. Um, so we we always get an array of cats and you know, and and different personality types too because we get a lot of people, you know, that are like 
I have a you know more quiet lifestyle. I love to read. I'm you know I want somebody that's just gonna be relaxed with me, and we definitely have the right pet for them. I heard that you can train a kitty to go to the bathroom on a toilet. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> I have. I actually personally have a friend that did train her cat to go on the toilet. So it it is something that they're capable of learning but they have to want to learn it. <laughs> so you can go through all the same steps with you know three different cats and only one of them will actually do it because the other two just don't aren't interested in it. <laughs> I would love a cat that could go to the bathroom and also make cheese souffle. Oh, that would so be fantastic. Like that, <laughs> I'll call you. <laughs> Janelle, thanks so much for coming on Animal oh, Zone. Anytime. Great to see you and I love your kitties. Thanks so much for sharing them. Thank you. Thank you for having us. This has been a, quite a treat, especially for JJ. <laughs> All right. We'll be back after these words. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry. If someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Every morning you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. Care for Paws was started in 2009 with the goal to reduce pet overpopulation and keep animals out of shelters, and also to ensure that pets can stay with their owners for life. We, from the get-go, established a free spay and neuter program that would help low-income pet owners fix their pets. So we provide shots, microchips, dewormer, flea treatment. We also have a veterinary intervention program. It's a way for us to help improve the quality of life for the animal as well for the owner. Because when an animal suffers in the family, so does the rest of the family. Well, if I was a dog, I'd want to come here to Canine Solutions in San Inez because they've got boarding, training, daycare, and most of all, fun. So let's go and check it out. So here we are with the owners of Canine Solutions, Eric and Justin, and you guys, thank you for having us up here today. Thanks for having us on Glad the show. To be here, yeah. This is exciting because this is a brand new facility that you set up, isn't it? Brand new, just a few months old. Wow. Tell me how it all started. Uh, you were originally in Santa Barbara, weren't you? God, I was in Santa Barbara about um, maybe 18 years ago, went to Brooks to become a photographer, and um, I originally started my dog training career when I was in the military, training police dogs, but then decided to take a detour to photography. Um, then after that, I uh, worked here for a while as a photographer for Santa Barbara Magazine, and then decided to go back to Boston to work, and that's where I also started training dogs again, but in a more like a pet dog trainer. I came on board with Eric, I met Eric in 2014 over a glass of wine at, at a point in my life where I needed a career change. So uh, Eric and I started the company in 2014 and, and came together and I, I learned how to train dogs with Eric and then brought my own skill set in. Over the years what I've learned and helped people understand because we get people that will show up and they're, they're really at their, their limit. They don't want to lose the dog. They've rescued a dog. They've done a wonderful thing by rescuing a dog but now they're in a situation where they don't know what to do. And so one of the first things we say to them is look let us help you learn how to manage what you have first so you can feel safe, confident, uh, so the dog can understand that you're going to be the one that's going to step in and be the one that they can depend on. So the management of those uh, situations are key because most people will get a rescue and go, well, let's go to the dog park. And they throw the dog in the dog park and the dog gets attacked or attacks someone else and then or bites somebody because they think that's a great way to start. Well, what we want to do first is let's spend time building a relationship between you and your dog through management of who that dog is. So if I have a dog that's ag uh, aggressive with people, okay, sticking up for that dog in a way, instead of having someone come in and go, hi buddy, how are you? And that dog biting somebody, you're allowed to manage it and say, hey, actually, uh, my guy's not real comfortable with that. We're working on it, hang tight, you know. So the management of 
aggression and reactivity, there's many ways to do it, but helping the person understand that A, it's okay to say, I can't do that. And then they go, ah, okay. And then teaching them the skills on how to handle the dog. Um, we use obedience for that. We use a lot of leash work. We use different tools and different ways to get the dog to, to think and, and respond. Uh, and that's really what we want. We want a dog that thinks. We're not here to uh, not let the dog experience that. So there's all these kinds of leashes and all these kinds of collars that are out there. You've got the full body harness type of collar. You've got the choke chains. You've got regular collars. Have you found that one works better than another? Well, it depends on where the client and the dog is coming from. Um, we do use prong collars quite a bit. Uh, we do not use choke chains. There's a big difference between the two. The choke chain was designed to do something very different than the prong collar was. So with the prong collar, we can communicate to the dog in a very intuitive way that the dog understands. Uh, it's supposed to mimic the bite from another dog. So now, if I put a little pressure with the leash with the prong collar, I'm sending a very clear message to the dog that the choke chain does not send. The choke chain just restrains, okay? And they fight against they that. They fight against it, yeah. So you're just having a tug of war, basically. Pretty much, like, especially with a dog like a pit bull, um, if they feel that pressure and they really want something, uh, you've got a pit, you probably know if he really wants something. I know. <laughs> <laughs> or if he doesn't really want to do something, yeah. he's not going to do it. Yeah, all so, feet like that, I'm not moving. I'm not going. Yeah. So um, I've got to have a way to put a little bit of stress on my dog. Not to the point where it shuts down or fights it, but just enough to get the dog to be motivated to follow it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's all I'm teaching is, look, you can turn this stress off just by moving towards it. And I teach them that before I even do it, mm -hmm. okay, in a way that I need to do it. So some dogs um, are low stressors. You can just use a little bit of pressure. Some dogs will lean into it, you know, and then you have to put a little bit more. But it's never done from um, an aspect of punishment. Right. Okay, it's again, it's communication. Sometimes I can have a conversation that's down here, and sometimes I have to have a conversation that's here. Right. Depends on where the dog's energy is. Well, this place is amazing, yeah, and I, I'm so glad we had a chance to come up and yeah, see Canine you. Solutions. You guys are doing Thanks. great work, and uh, we hope we come back again. Maybe we'll see some more about dogs. Let's do it. Love to have you. Appreciate it. Thank Alrighty. you so much. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got more Animal Zone. My grandfather taught me about the beauty of the rugs. Each one tells a story. Story about the person who wove it, the person who bought it, the person who inherits it, the person who treasures it. It's amazing how simply looking at an object can bring you back to a different place and time or remind you of someone you love. At Santa Barbara Design Center, we want to help you find a rug that will travel through time with your family for generations to come. Visit us at 410 Oliver Street and find your treasure today. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them! Wayne Pacelli has probably championed more legislation for the welfare of animals than anyone in recent times. Well, here in the U.S., we, we're a, a country now of pet lovers. We have been for we certainly are. centuries. And, yeah. But now the ownership of pets is huge. Oh, I mean, it's how many, how many people have pets yeah. in the well, States? Well, just thinking about our dogs and cats who are in our households, it's 170 million plus dogs and cats. Wow. 170. So you think of 325 million people and that number's climbing, so we're probably going to hit 200 million not too distant future. And then lots of people care for feral cats, you know, around their homes and in their communities. And then when you add in horses, there are millions of horses and then there are millions of... And then of, there's a few ponies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ponies, exactly. And then there are, you know, there are birds, there are rabbits, there are guinea pigs. When you add all of them up, it's 350 million plus. So there are more pets than people basically in American households. Amazing. And you think of the industries that are tied to that. So there's all the animal uh, food and, and feed. There's all the veterinary care. There are all the toys. I know you bestow a lot of toys on Mikey and other creatures in your home. 
And you know, that is really just a great part of our, of our human lives. I mean, animals enrich our lives and they have lives that matter to them and it's great for us to care for them. It really is. Now what happens in a, in a household, you know, they're expensive to keep animals. I mean, there's no doubt there are veterinary yeah. bills. They seem to be climbing all the time. It's like healthcare for humans. It's gone crazy. It, it is. W and what can you do to help that yeah. cause? Well, the Animal Wellness Foundation, which is one of the groups that, that I help to lead, uh, really has identified what I think is one of the big companion animal issues, one of the big dog and cat issues. And that issue is that there are 40 million people at or below the poverty line in the United States. And that's a big number. And my experience and all the data show that, that people who are having a tougher time in terms of their economic circumstance still have pets in the same proportion as people who are earning higher incomes because it's part of our human experience, it's part of our bond that we have with other uh, creatures. The problem is that in many areas there are no vets that set up shop in some of these communities where people have animals. And there are few pet stores so you have difficulty accessing pet food and other pet supplies and services. And then even if you could access the services, a lot of people can't afford these treatments. I mean it's very problematic if someone even needs a vaccination or spay and neuter is even more expensive. A medical procedure can break the bank. So what we're doing at the Animal Wellness Foundation, we're starting a small scale in Los Angeles and we want to replicate this around the country is we're subsidizing care of animals for their medical needs. So not just spay and neuter but vaccinations which of course is a preventative sort of program so an animal doesn't get sick like distemper or some other terrible malady. But then also if they have a condition, if they're obviously if they have a traumatic injury in a, in a, in a car accident, you know, if they're struck on the road, or if they have a, for some sort of cancer or some other problem. And this is life-saving for animals, because if they don't get this intervention, they're going, to, they're going to perish. And to me, you know, as we have done so much more in the way of spaying and neutering and adoption, we're driving down euthanasia rates. One of the biggest animal welfare issues now is not euthanasia of animals in shelters, it's lack of medical care for, for tens of millions of animals. And I think that all of us know that the human healthcare circumstance is quite fraught. And a lot of people, we have big debates in society, it's one of the top political issues in the country. Well, there's a whole veterinary healthcare issue. And there's no safety net for these animals. And with medical costs, veterinary costs rising, we've got a major problem that is in evidence now, and it's only gonna get worse. So we need some strategic attention to this issue, and that's one of the things we wanna do at Animal Wellness Foundation. You are an animal savior. Thank you so much, Wayne, for coming on Animal Zone with us today. Thank you. Great to see you. We're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we've got more Animal Zone. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Carrie Burns and I'm the Executive Director for the Santa Barbara Humane Society. And what we want you to know is that humane societies are local to each community. No one is associated with the National Humane Society. So when you donate or you adopt, know that everything that you touch is right there in your own backyard. We want you to donate, volunteer, and adopt. For more information, visit sbhumanesociety.org. There's some amazing animals and guests. You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true, never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine time so glad you're my best friend through thick and thin we'll see things through canine of mine so true did i find you or did you find me either way it's still serendipity when I saw you, it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie Wanna be your canine of mine Friend for all time I'm so glad you're my best friend